Good morning. Welcome to St. Helena Catholic Church for the celebration of the first Sunday of Lent. It is a joy to worship with you today. In order to preserve the sacredness of this Eucharistic celebration, we ask that all phones be silenced and out of reverence, please refrain from chewing gum and texting during Mass. As Catholics, we fully participate in the celebration of the Eucharist when we receive Holy Communion. We are encouraged to receive communion devoutly and frequently. In order to be properly prepared to receive communion, Catholic participants should not be conscious of grave sin and should have fasted for one hour. A person who is conscious of grave sin is not to receive the body and blood of the Lord without prior sacramental confession. If you are not of our faith or outside of the church, please come forward to receive a blessing. The readings for today are found in the Journey Songbook, number 884B. Please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we gather in this cold winter morning, I welcome all of you to St. Helena Church. And as we gather in the Lord's presence on this first Sunday of Lent, let us prepare our hearts by calling to mind our sin and humbly asking the Lord's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. If we have any children who are here for Children's Church today, if you come forward. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, at the beginning of this holy season of Lent, we go into the wilderness with you, there to fast and pray. We ask you, Spirit of God, make these days holy. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, to bless these young children, that their minds and hearts may be open to the understanding of God's holy word. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord.
teaches the humble his ways. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteousness for the sake of the unrighteous, that he may lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought forth to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to spirits in prison who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not for the removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with the angels, authorities, and the powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Each year, as you probably know, on this first Sunday of Lent, we hear the gospel account of our Lord Jesus being led by the Spirit into the desert wilderness for a period of 40 days, there to fast and pray. During those 40 days, which form our own template for the season of Lent, our Lord resolved to do whatever was necessary to accomplish his heavenly Father's will but he also experienced during that time something that every human being experiences in the course of life. And I'm speaking about temptation by the devil. Beginning with our first parents, Adam and Eve, every one of us, every human person has experienced temptation. And with the exception of our Lord Jesus and his mother, Every one of us at some time or another has given in 
to Satan's wiles. Today we have St. Mark's account of our Lord being tempted, and even though Mark does not describe his temptation in detail, we already know about those temptations from the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. The first temptation occurred when Satan tried to goad Jesus to turn stones into bread. Our Lord was very hungry at that time because he had already fasted for 40 days. And yet, our Lord still said no to that temptation by quoting the words of sacred scripture. Man does not live, Jesus said, by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. It was at that point that Satan, who is the prince of this world, showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the earth, and he promised him that everything which this world has to offer would be his if he would bow down and worship him. Our Lord firmly rejected that temptation as well when he said to the devil, the Lord your God shall you worship, him alone shall you adore. Satan had struck out two times, but he tried once more. And so he took our Lord to the parapet of the temple and he urged Jesus to throw himself down so that the angels of God would come from heaven and rescue him. We all like to be thought well of by others, don't we? It would have been so easy for our Lord at that moment to work some powerful sign that would show the world that he was indeed the divine Son of God. And yet our Lord rejected this temptation by saying, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. In one form or another, each of these three temptations was an enticement for our Lord Jesus to put his human will above the will of God, which would have been the sin of disobedience and pride. And yet three times our Lord said no to Satan, and he embraced the Father's will as his own. For a moment, let's take a look at what our Lord Jesus did right, and what we and our first parents have unfortunately so often done wrong when we were tempted in the hopes that we can learn a valuable lesson from our mistakes. The first thing to recognize is that when our Lord encountered Satan in the desert, he met him head on. In every instance, Jesus responded directly to Satan and he confounded him with a superior knowledge and understanding of God's holy word. In a way, it, it almost seems simple to us, doesn't it? But if it was simple for Jesus to do that, maybe not so much for us. You see, there's a big difference between our Lord Jesus and us, a difference that we should always bear in mind. It's true that Jesus is fully human, but he is also the Son of God. He is divine. You and I are not. Jesus is all holy and all knowing. You and I are sinful and fallible and weak. If you think back to our first parents, Adam and Eve in the garden, their first mistake in dealing with temptation, and it's a mistake that you and I have often made ourselves, was to entertain the devil's ideas. That's how temptation begins. And then we let it sit there. We pray on it in our own minds. Rather than crying out to God right away, for his help in combating Satan, our first parents gave in to foolish pride and they decided to meet the devil on his own turf. If they thought they could outwit Satan, they could not. As soon as they began to entertain his line of questioning and react to his suggestions, they fell into his snare. You see, the devil is a master predator, far more intelligent than we are. And he's had a great deal of practice over the millennia. 
and he's done it billions and billions of times. He knows human nature even better than we know ourselves. On our own, apart from Christ, we are weak and vulnerable prey for the tempter, who's like a wolf pursuing a lamb. You'd think that the quickest way for a wolf to bring down a lamb would be to attack its legs and make it stumble, but that is not how a wolf attacks a sheep. First, he separates the lamb from the flock, and then he goes for the jugular vein. When he sinks his teeth in the lamb's neck, it can no longer bleed or even cry out to the shepherd. And Satan does something similar to us. First, he isolates us. He draws us away from the shepherd, away from the flock. And then he disables our ability to cry out to God for help by disrupting and even destroying our life of prayer. Have you ever noticed, for example, that when you set aside a special time to pray, something more important always seems to come up. You remember a chore that you've been putting off that you need to complete, or a phone call that you need to make, or else you decide to check the messages on your cell phone or your computer. This is my favorite. I think, man, I'm a little bit hungry right now, and that would distract me in prayer. So I'll go and see what's in the fridge and have a snack. Then I'll be ready to pray. See, the devil will do anything to keep us from prayer. Satan tries his very best to divert our attention from the Lord. And by tempting us to avoid prayer, and when that becomes a habit, he takes away our voice so that we feel helpless when tempted. We feel that we cannot cry out to the Lord. You see, Satan knows something that we often forget. Namely, that God is infinitely stronger than he is. Just think about it. Satan is no match for God. Sometimes people make the mistake as though there are these two eternal realities, good and evil, God and Satan. That's not true. Satan is not eternal because he had a beginning. He was a creature of God who rebelled against him, and as a creature, he's no match for God himself. And so he does everything to draw us away from the Lord, little by little, so that he can attack us when we're isolated and alone. St. Augustine had a great insight when he said, the devil is a chained dog. He cannot bite you unless you go near him. He might growl and bark and show his teeth and snarl, but he cannot overcome us if we keep our distance because he cannot go beyond his bounds. Show him the cross of Christ, Augustine said and he will flee to his fiery kennel in hell. Our ancient enemy, Augustine goes on, is strong in dealing with those who give in to him, but weak against those who resist him. If you consent to his suggestions, you can no more tame him than a lion, but if you, can, if you resist him, you can trample him like an ant. This is why the scripture says in the epistle of St. James, chapter 4, verse 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You see, a person who is in the state of sanctifying grace and who has the habit of prayer and the discipline of doing penance is a fearful thing to Satan, because it means the Holy Spirit, the power of God, is in that person. But Augustine is also warning us that the way to counter the devil and his temptations is not by meeting him head on, but by keeping our minds and our hearts fixed on Jesus Christ, who is the source of power and strength in our lives. This is also why it's so important, and Father Mark constantly reminded us of this, to have 
sacramentals nearby in our homes, to have the crucifix, holy water, the rosary, a Bible. And these things remind us of Jesus. When I was in Medjugorje a few weeks ago, Father Svetozor, a holy Franciscan who has been there from the beginning, gave us a wonderful talk. And he said, if your neighbor doesn't know you're Catholic, then you're not really Catholic. What he meant was, we shouldn't be ashamed of our faith. We shouldn't hide it. It needs to be visible in our homes. And we need these blessed objects to remind us that Jesus is near. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we begin this holy season of Lent, we want to spend these next six weeks near to you, to spend every waking hour in your presence and to listen to your voice in the silence of our souls. Help us, O oh Lord, to be faithful. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts so that we might experience true sorrow for sin, a firm purpose of amendment, trust in your mercy and confidence in your grace. Inspire within us, O Spirit of God, the gift of Christian prayer so that we may constantly call out Abba, Father. Lord Jesus, we put our trust in you. Today on this first Sunday of Lent, we will recognize our catechumens and our candidates who have been guided by our own parishioners during the weeks that have preceded Lent, and today they will be going to the cathedral, St. Joseph Cathedral in Baton Rouge, for the rite of election with our bishop. And so at this time, I'd like to call Margaret Peak to come forward and introduce our catechumens and candidates. Good morning. Father, Father Miles, these catechumens whom I present to you are beginning the final period of preparation and purification leading to their initiation. They have found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayers and example. Now they ask that they be recognized for the progress they've made by, in their spiritual formation and that they receive the assurance of our blessings and prayers as they go to the rite of election celebrated this afternoon by the Most Reverend Bishop Michael Duca. Please stand with your sponsor when your name is called. Michelle Muse. Rosalind Pacheco. My dear friends, these two catechumens have been preparing for the sacraments of initiation, for baptism and confirmation and Holy Eucharist, in the hope that they will be found ready to, to participate today in the rite of election and to be chosen in Christ for these Easter sacraments. It is the responsibility of our community to inquire about their readiness before they are presented to the bishop this afternoon. And so I turn now to you godparents for your testimony about these two catechumens. Have they taken their formation in the gospel and the Catholic way of life seriously? Have they given evidence of their conversion by the example of their lives? Do you judge them ready to be presented to the bishop for the rite of election today? My dear catechumens, our community gladly recommends you to the bishop, who in the name of Christ will call you to the Easter sacraments. May God bring to completion the good work which he has begun in you. And at this time, I invite you to come forward and to sign your name in the book of the elect, which will be presented to Bishop Duca this afternoon.
Father Miles, I now present to you the candidates who are beginning the final preparation for the sacraments of confirmation and Eucharist. They have found strength in God's grace and support in your community's prayers and example. Now they ask that they be recognized for their progress they've made in their spiritual formation and that they receive assurance of our blessings and prayers as they go forth for recognition by Bishop Duca this afternoon. When your name is called, please stand with your sponsor. Jennifer Anderson, Lance Anderson, William Cannon, Talia Garcia, Brenda Herring, John Shake Snyder, Herman Walker. My brothers and sisters, these are candidates for full communion. They've already been baptized, but now they are preparing for the sacrament of confirmation, especially, and some also for their first communion. In their period of catechetical formation, they've listened to the word of God and endeavored to follow his commands more perfectly. And they've shared with their Catholic brothers and sisters in this community who have joined them in prayer. And so I announce to all of you here that our community supports these candidates and their desire for full communion. And I ask their sponsors to state their opinion once more so that all of you may hear. Dear sponsors, as God is your witness, you consider these candidates to be ready, ready to be received into full communion with our church. Yes. And now, my dear friends, your sponsors have spoken in your favor. The church, in the name of Christ, accepts their testimony and send you on to Bishop Duca this afternoon, who will exhort you to live in deeper conformity to the life of Christ. And I invite all of you by applause to show your acceptance of these candidates. And would you all stand now as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, son of Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell and rose from the dead on the third day. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence and trust in our Father's love, let us offer our needs to him in prayer. For the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Michael, all our clergy and religious, and for the intentions of all of us present here today, we, we pray to the Lord. For the holy souls in purgatory, heaven's hospital, we pray to the Lord. For an end to abortion and all sins against the dignity of human life, we pray to the Lord. That families will recommit themselves to fervent prayer this Lent, to grow in love and holiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord that many young people will respond to Christ's call to follow him in consecrated life and in the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the grace this week to face the temptations of life by relying on the love of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. For those for whom this Mass is being offered, for the sick and for those who have died, especially Miss Ann Dana and our beloved pastor, Father Mark Beard, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord hear our prayers. 
Lord God, loving Father, we give you thanks in this first Sunday of Lent for all the graces that you offer us in this holy season. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your humble obedience to the Heavenly Father's will and for giving us the example for you, Lord, of the way, the truth, and the life. We ask you, Spirit of God, to grant us true contrition for our sins and also confidence in the power of prayer, which is your holy gift. Do we make this prayer through Christ our Lord? Ace Domini, Ace Populo Tuo, Ne in Aternum, Irascaris Nobis. Spare your people, Lord. Bear your people in your loving kindness. Show us your mercy. We have sinned against the Lord. Have mercy on me, God, in your goodness. In your abundant compassion, blot out my offense. Wash away all my guilt from my sin. Cleanse me, parce domine, parce populo tuo, ne in atunum irascaris nobis. A clean heart create for me, God, renew in me a steadfast spirit. Do not drive me away from your presence nor take me your Holy Spirit. Parce Domine, Parce Populo Tuo, Ne in Artunum Irascaris Nobis. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings. 
for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time of the year, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with the Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated himself through this fast as the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, he taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthy the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the Lord at all times. His praise shall always be on my lips. My soul shall glory in the Lord. For He has been so good to me. the Lord with me.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Through Christ our Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and that of his Holy Mother, I demand and command that any evil spirits, hexes, vexes, triggers, trances, vows, or demonic blessings among those who have gathered their loved ones and their possessions, through the authority of Holy Mother Church and the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Savior, Jesus Christ, I bind them separately and individually and break all seals. They are bound and the seals are broken. They are done so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Totally yours, immaculate conception, Mary, my mother. Live in me, act in me, speak in me and through me. Think your thoughts in my mind, love through my heart. Give me your dispositions and feelings. Teach me, lead me, and guide me to Jesus. Correct, enlighten, and expand my thoughts and behavior. Possess my soul. Take over my entire personality and life. Replace it with yourself. Incline me to constant adoration. Pray in me and through me. Let me live in you and keep me in this union always. Amen. I thank all of you for being here at Mass today. And also, we've had wonderful attendance throughout the week, both at our Ash Wednesday Masses, which were full, and also even on Mardi Gras, when we had uh, a, a large number of people to offer a special Mass of reparation to the Holy Face of Jesus. I remind you that if you want to make that journey of daily Mass through Lent, the early Mass is at 7.30, uh, Tuesday through Friday and also on first Saturday, and you're certainly invited to come. Also, two announcements. Uh, every Saturday during this season of Lent, for the next six, six weeks, there will be a special study of our Lord's presence in the Eucharist called Jesus and the Eucharist, and it begins at 9 o'clock in the parish hall till 11 with uh, table discussion and, and small groups as well. Also, this weekend, the members of our St. Vincent de Paul Society are outside the church to begin the promotion, which we do each year, of the St. Vincent de Paul Pharmacy for the needy in Baton Rouge. There are medicine bottles uh, that you can take home as a reminder and bring it back in the next couple of weeks with a, a donation, a monetary donation inside. Or if you just like to give a monetary don donation today, you can do that as well. I hope you have a beautiful Sunday. The Lord be with you. With May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.